Good day folks, welcome to my channel. This is going to be my very first video and the topic I'll discuss is the Donnan Membrane Equilibrium. Let's begin with the definition of the Donnan Membrane Equilibrium. So the definition goes like this. When two solutions are separated by a membrane permeable to both water and small ions, but when one of the compartments contains impermeable ions like proteins, Distribution of permeable ions occur according to the calculations of Donnan. So now let's see what Donnan's equilibrium actually means through a hypothetical situation. So suppose you have two compartments, a right and a left compartment, which is separated by a semi-permeable membrane. So this is showing the before uh, reaching the equilibrium situation and this is the one which is representing this figure represent the after equilibrium situation. Let's suppose that the left compartment consists of 5 Na plus ions and 5 R minus ions. Here this R minus it is to represent non-diffusible anions. But as the right compartment consists of 10 Na plus ions and 10 Cl minus ions. So from this we have to understand we have uh, this uh, both the Na plus on both sides that is on both the compartments as well as the C and minus are diffusible whereas we only have one component which is not diffusible and that is the R minus. So here we have the after equilibrium situation you can see that one Na plus ion is moving from the left compartment to the right compartment whereas one C L minus ion not one actually four C L minus ion is moving from the right compartment to the left compartment whereas R minus is not diffusing. Now let's see how the following equilibrium is reached. These are the following points that you have to keep in mind when you say that the donut's equilibrium is attained. The first point is the products of diffusible electrolytes in both compartments are equal. The electrical neutrality of each compartment is maintained. And the third point is that the total number of a particular type of ions before and after equilibrium is the same. Now let's see all these points one by one. So the first point is the products of diffusible electrolytes in both compartments are equal. So this is actually representing an after equilibrium situation. So you can see that here the diffusible electrolytes are Na plus which is a sodium ions and Cl minus which is a chloride ions. So uh, from this after equilibrium you have the number of the ions by calculating you can identify that here you have 9 Na plus and 4 Cl minus whereas on the right compartment you have 6 Na plus and 6 Cl minus. So multiply 9 4 are 36 ions and 6 6 are 36 ions. So this from this first point we can conclude that that is how the first point to reach the equilibrium is. The next point is that the electrical neutrality of each compartment is maintained. So for this you can identify that in the left compartment you have 9 positive ions and you have 5 plus 4 that is 9 negative ions. So here 9 positive and 9 negative. So there the electrical neutrality is maintained. That is if you take the right compartment also you can see a similar result that is you have 6 positive ions and 6 negative ions. So there also the electrical neutrality is maintained. Now moving on to the third point that is the total number of a particular type of ion before and after the equilibrium is same. So let's first consider about the Na plus ion. So here the Na plus you can see 5 on the left compartment, 10 on the right compartment that is before equilibrium and 9 on uh, and in the case of after equilibrium you can see 9 on the left and 6 on the right. So actually 10 plus 5 is giving you 15 and 9 plus 6 is also giving you 15. Now if you are going to take the case of the chloride ions, you can see that the right compartment consists of 10 chloride ions. Here if you are seeing the after equilibrium situation, you can see there is 4 Cl minus ions on the left compartment and 6 Cl minus in the right compartment. Summing up, you get 10 Cl minus. So this, the total number of each type of ion is maintained in the case of attaining the torn and membrane equilibrium. As a result, when there is a non-diffusible anion on one side of a membrane, the diffusible cations are more and diffusible anions are less on that side of the membrane. Now let's move on to the clinical applications of the Donnan's equilibrium. 
so the first one the first most important one is the lower ph value within the tissue cells so why the tissue cells have lower ph value compared to the surrounding fluid so this is because the concentration concentration of negative protein ions within the cells are higher than in the surrounding fluid and these negative protein ions if you see protein you have to understand that it is non diffusible and that is a negative ion so the concentration of these negative protein ions are higher within the cell than on the surrounding fluid now the next application is the ph within the red cells so here also you have a similar reason but here you have the non diffusible hemoglobin ion and that is also negatively charged so you have a negatively charged hemoglobin ion within the red cells so it will be having comparatively low ph on the inside rather than the surrounding fluid then you can talk about the uh, chloride shift in arthrocytes and also the higher concentration of chloride in cerebrospinal fluid so these are the basic important clinical applications of the donuts mem uh, membrane equilibrium that's it for the topic if you honestly did understand the topic do like share and subscribe thank you